Oh my goodness. Peak was delivered. Shota and Dabi went all out and the fight is over for good. This episode covered a lot and it felt like it happened so quickly. The OST, the emotions, the fight, everything was just perfect. Hello guys, this is Minx and I'll be talking about episode 8 of season 7 of My Hero Academia in this video, which is titled Two Flashfires, the same title as chapter 351. The episode starts with Gori, which is his real name, a police officer who walks up to the cell as Dr. Garaki begins to tell Gori how him and All for One sought out Wab seeds born within the world worthy of being All for One's vessels. Darby is just straight up melting at this point and Shoto and company are fully prepared to face Darby. After the opening, we directly skip to the day on the Sekoto peak where Toya was burned in forest fire, but it started because of Toya crying as Endeavor didn't show up to see his growth with his quirk. When Toya sets himself on fire, it's actually reanimated and doesn't reuse the animation from season 6 as Toya says to himself that he hasn't shown Endeavor anything yet. The scene was really sad and painful. Toya was unable to control his flames and just got cooked badly. We even got to saw how his lower jaw just fell off. Thanks to the river nearby, he managed to cool down to some extent or he would have just burned down to ashes. And look who's here. As expected, All for One is once again linked to someone's tragic childhood. He found Toya on the riverbank and now we see a facility where there are many children and at first it all seems pretty normal but it's actually a pretty dark place. Toya woke up from his coma after three whole years had passed. Dr. Sunny tells him that he can't go back to his home and he has to get along with his new family. Toya tries to cope with the situation as he figures that Endeavor hadn't visited him because he was just busy doing hero work and that he still needed to say sorry to his parents for saying and doing some horrible things to them. And this is when All for One interrupts him and speaks to a monitor and tells him that he won't be able to show Endeavor what he can do with his quirk or become a hero as his body after being burned was extremely hard to repair. Pieces of him had to be replaced with a regenerative tissue causing Toya to look like someone completely different and he would never be the same again. He won't be able to use his quirk like before as all of his organs were damaged on top of his senses and ability to feel pain being dulled. Toya gets an offer from All for One that he could potentially restore his flame to their full glory. Toya tells All for One to shut up as he doesn't want to be trained by anyone unless it's his dad. Davi then burns up the entire facility and runs away. And, oh man, just think of this. You have been sleeping for three whole years. You are 16 years old now and your body has gone crazy transformation. You got new skin for real. Your voice changed and when you go back home no one has changed and simply moved on. Endeavor is still crazy about surpassing All Might with his children and is training Shoto recklessly. And this broke Toya. He had no choice but to leave them for good. Also in the manga it was stated that the facility actually didn't burn down and the fire was quickly put out but this did not happen in the anime. Continuing on. Garaki tells Gori it was too late for All for One to exploit Toya as his obsession with Endeavor was just too much. This facility was a dark place as all the kids were nothing but spares in case anything happened to Shigaraki. And Dabi was one of those spares. When Dabi met Garaki after all these years, he knew what would have happened to him if he stayed there for long. That is, him being turned into a Nomu and that's the worst part. All of these kids were being raised so that they could be used to make no moves. The anime adds a scene of Toya roaming the city after escaping the facility and for real, the lighting here was so so good. Garaki states that they let Dabi run loose because after he woke up from the coma, he wasn't supposed to live for more than a month. That's why years later Garaki was genuinely surprised to see Dabi still alive in Kyushu during the pro hero arc. Dabi confronts Garaki knowing that he was the one who kept him alive all those years back and upon looking at the high end Nomu, he realizes that Garaki was going to do something along the lines of what was done to the Nomu. After stating that Kyushu would be the perfect place for his funeral, he looks at Garaki, shaking him to his core as Garaki understood that Dabi's body was heading towards death. But Dabi held on to life through the flames of resentment towards Endeavor. And OMG, this shot was very detailed and I don't think I'll be able to forget this scene for a long time. Back to Dabi vs Shoto, Dabi explains to Shoto that he never felt pain from his body falling to pieces when he was honing his flames to be stronger. The next time they met, he studied Endeavor's moves while watching him through a screen. 
learning how to further hone his quirk. The anime adds an entire scene of Toya in an abandoned building watching from a laptop of all of Endeavor's moves, studying them and learning how to hone his power while watching Endeavor, thus replacing the panel of laptops, phones and TVs. Shoto then realizes that Dabi this whole time was expecting to die from the beginning. Dabi states that since the day Toya died, Dabi was born as we see Dabi praying over a shrine of Toya with an amazing metal guitar soundtrack and they really nailed the scene. The lighting was just too good here. MH season 7 is actually a lot better than season 6 when it comes to this. Dabi tells Shoto that he will burn everything that Endeavor holds dear to hold a proof of his existence. The anime adds the scene of Dabi in the abandoned building learning to raise his flame's temperature on his own, turning his fire blue, surpassing his limits thanks to his body no longer being able to feel pain. Dabi begins the fight with unleashing his flash fire fist held spider onto Shoto and the other heroes below. The same move Endeavor used against the high and no move back in Kyushu. Shoto gets ready to unleash his Hellfire Fist and is then blitzed by Dabi's insane speed as he appears behind him as Hell Spider was meant to be just a distraction. Dabi punches Shoto, sending him flying into the ground. Dabi lunges at Shoto, hitting him with a flurry of flamed punches and Dabi once again talks down to Shoto, stating that he was the boy born with everything but never tried to be his full potential, depending on everyone else calling him a half-baked puppet that will never amount to anything. As he kicks Shoto into the air and hits Shoto with a jet, burn launching him into a nearby building and god damn this scene was just epic Dabi's screams were just crazy hero shimono nailed the jet burn scene shoto through the smoke agrees with him as he was full of doubt and is a half-baked dummy as Dabi notices that shoto neutralized his heat upon being hit with jet burn shoto states that he's glad to know that that Dabi was noticing him all this time and and that he turned flashfire into something more of a move to stop the we see Shoto telling Endeavor that it's our duty to stop Dabi as they're doing this together. Shoto tells Dabi that Endeavor was crazy, their family was hopeless, but despite all that Dabi was the one who chose to burn people to death. In the flashback to the dorm, Shoto tells Deku that he wanted to face off against Dabi and that Dabi's existence is his family's crime to bear. In order for him to reach the heights he is aiming for, he can't run from facing his brother. He then shows Deku his new move he created to get over that height taking the essence of flash fire and using his right and left sides at the same time with his heart at the center the hot and cold blood circulating through his body bringing the equilibrium to both sides mixing them together creating cold flames flames that when touched the heat can't be felt he's doing the opposite of what endeavor wanted in terms of his eyes cancelling out Shoto's inner heat. He's doing all of this so he can accept the reason he was born into his family as he tells Deku that this is a power, thanking him, referencing what Deku told him back during the sports festival about Shoto's quirk being his own. Shoto then comes down unleashing his new ultimate move, Flash Fire Fist Phosphor, hitting Dabi with ice bound crash cold flames. Pale Blade sending Dabi back. Dabi catches himself with his flames as he looks at Shoto, stating that Shoto was the perfect one to face him as he has a body able to withstand scorching heat and the power to cool his flames. Shoto loses his phosphor state as Dabi lands on the ground, stating that warped rails will never cross straight paths. This being the limit of superhuman society which perfectly describes both of them and that Shoto needs to die for the sake. Dabi unleashes his flames into the ground as they shoot off wildly from underneath the earth. Endeavor's sidekicks take the hit for Shoto protecting him as they believe in him. Shoto once again begins to refocus his phosphor state as he reflects on his past burdened by his family's past, feeling left behind by others but his friends were always there waiting for him. Class 1 he never left him behind and helped him overcome his burdens and traumas. The anime adds in Dabi unleashing flames that surround Shoto. Shoto releases his phosphor and with tremendous speed hits Dabi right in the stomach unleashing his great glacial agar. Young versions of Toya and Shoto are shown as we get added shots of the city, Dabi's flames and All Might's statue all frozen. And damn, I must say this was beautiful and emotional. The anime did this scene justice. And I'm very happy with it. The episode ends with Dabi falling onto Shoto's shoulder, defeated. Now, this episode adapted a total of three chapters, being chapter 350, 351, and 352. This episode was absolutely perfect from beginning to the end. That really highlighted why the Todoroki family are some of the best written characters in the series. The animation and the direction this episode were absolutely perfect. Hats off to the voice actors, Hiro Shimono and Yuki Kaji both gave their absolute best for this episode, and it was fantastic.
I will get this episode a 9 out of 10. Next week, we are seeing Endeavors and Hawks fight with all for one. So, yes, guys, this is it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and stay tuned for more My Hero Academia videos. And do let me know your thoughts on Shoto vs. Dabi. Thank you so much for sticking till the end, and I'll see you guys next week.